Yo, what's going on guys? The other day we streamed here on YouTube testing everything we could think to when it comes to Max, and I wanted to share some of those results with you guys. Since this may be a long video, there will be timestamps in the description so you can click around the video if there's something specific you're interested in. We're going to be talking about why some Max aren't able to melee, how to kill different enemies like Bile Titans in two shots without having to aim at the mouth by the way, some of the bugginess with Max, the problem with Max and Automata and just some other fun facts like how mechs can swim in deep water that you would normally drown in. Now if you enjoy this style of content, all I ask if you would please like the video. I'm going to be slowing down my uploads to provide more quality guides on YouTube, but we'll aim to do daily streams when updates drop, as I feel the daily uploads have been lowering the quality of my videos a little bit. Now the first topic we're going to cover is mechs randomly exploding, and we're also going to cover melee in this section, as our melee testing actually taught us some things about about the damage that mechs take. Now many people have run into the issue of shooting a rocket while turning and blowing yourself up. But what I've learned about this is that the rocket attachment is on the left side of the mech's body, so this only happens while you are turning to the right. Now in a sense, I will say that the mech doesn't turn as fast as your crosshair, even if your crosshair is on an enemy while you're turning quickly, if the mech hasn't turned quick enough to catch up and you shoot a rocket or even your machine gun early for that matter, it would miss the shot anyway. So try not to shoot too fast and let the mech fully turn so that you can conserve ammo and also not blow your mech up. But at the same time of this, in the heat of the battle, this can sometimes cause you to mess up and shoot too early, which ends up killing you which has also happened to me, by the way, and that can definitely be very annoying and feel extremely punishing, destroying the stratagem that has a 10-minute cooldown, and I hope the devs consider taking a look at this. Now, I want to transition this into the mech's melee, because when I saw videos of mechs getting different melee kills, one of the first things I did was spawn in my mech and try to melee, but for some reason, a freshly spawned mech just couldn't melee. Now, there's actually two different reasons for this. The first reason is that if you rebound your melee button like I did, the mech actually still uses the default melee button. So on keyboard, that's going to be the letter F, and on controller, it's the clicking the right stick or R3. Now, the second reason you won't be able to melee is actually the more interesting reason, and we're going to get into some of the damage testing. And it's that the mechs lose the ability to melee if the leg of of the mech takes enough damage. So then how come sometimes when you first spawn in a mech it can't melee at all? Well, we ended up learning that mechs actually sometimes take fall damage when the pelican drops it in. Now this is completely random and uncontrollable. This is something I would really like to see changed. For one, it's just completely inconsistent and the melee is not overpowered in any way. But sometimes you're just not able to do it at all because your mech can just randomly take fall damage when being summoned. The melee can be useful for destroying buildings, killing weaker enemies to conserve ammo like hunters, but it's also just inconsistent with the way limbs work on pretty much every other enemy in the game. A devastator, for example, only can't shoot their gun anymore when the limb is completely blown off, so I don't understand why we're not able to melee unless our leg is completely blown off or I suppose at that point if the mech just blows up. Also, I'd just like to point out that the mechs for some reason take damage when walking over the plants on the terminated planets, like the smoke plants, the acid plants, and I think those are the only two. And actually, I noticed when I walked over one of those, it actually disabled the melee on my mech. I really think the devs should look into a fix for making mechs not take fall damage, damage from smoke plants, etc. And also just look into a change to not letting the melee get disabled for mechs as it just seems to happen completely randomly. Now keep in mind we actually did try spawning the mech on a higher elevation and we also tried spawning it in on more even ground and uneven ground. We tried spawning it, it in all over the place and there was no rhyme or reason to what we could find to what makes the mech take fall damage when landing. We spawned a mech that could melee and then spawned a second mech in the same exact spot and it just couldn't melee at all. So this just seems completely inconsistent. Next, let's quickly talk about mechs versus bile titans and chargers, and I'll give a quick shout out to some of the automaton units. Now, you may have heard that mechs need to shoot two rockets into the head to destroy a bile titan. But if you're like me, you had different results in the game. What you really need to do is just shoot a bile titan anywhere in the head or the body twice in the same spot. And I found that the body is actually a bit easier to do and a bit more consistent, but it can be a bit difficult if the titan is 
is facing you. You see, the first rocket will destroy the armor on the Bile Titan's body, and the second rocket deals enough splash damage to the body to kill it. Now, the rocket pods of the mech have very little splash radius, so this may seem inconsistent, but just go ahead and aim for the body, try to not to hit the legs, as the legs are completely invulnerable from what I can tell, and just rapid fire two rockets, and most of the time it should die. And quickly, since we're on the topic of Bile Titans, you may have the Mech Stratagem as your way in your build to kill them on your mission, so you might not be spawning them in until a Bile Titan comes up on the map. But be careful, because the Bile Titan can easily one-shot it with its Acid Breath, and the Mech is too slow to avoid it. So what you're going to want to do is shoot the Bile Titan's stomach sack out. If you shoot the little green sack on its stomach, it's not going to be able to spit anymore, and then you want to call your mech in. Or if you've already called your mech in at that point, then you want to get into your mech. Now, it is possible you want to call your mech in first, because if the dropship happens to target the Bile Titan, it actually can kill it for you. And then once all that's done, then hop in your mech and finish it off with two really well-aimed rockets. And we're also going to talk about the mech threat radius in a later section, and tips on not getting targeted by specific enemies a bit later in this video. Now, when it comes to chargers, pretty much everyone knows, just shoot one rocket at the leg, breaking the armor, and then spray it with a machine gun. But if you slightly miss the leg, it sometimes won't break the armor and hit the body instead, but two rockets anywhere on the charger, from what I can tell, will kill it. I just figured I'd cover that real quick in this video. Keep in mind with chargers, the actual charge won't actually kill you, like the head bash part. But if the charger happens to step on your mech, it will kill it. Or if the charger actually lifts back and steps with the charging crush, it will kill it as well. As a side note, you can actually pop out of your mech, let him ram into it and stun him, and then get back into it to finish him off easily. But most of the time, you can just shoot him with a rocket and take down the leg, or just shoot him with the two rockets like I mentioned. Now let's talk about mechs versus automatons and why they feel so bad against them, and then we'll transition into the mech's threat radius because this is kind of part of the same section, and a tip on making it so enemies don't target your mech so much. Now the first reason mechs feel bad against against bots is because of their rockets. Now, if you didn't know, but explosive damage deals bonus damage to weak spots compared to normal gunfire. And many of the robots that spawn have rockets, so I believe that their splash damage is just very effective get against mechs for that reason. The radius on the rockets is just hitting the weak spots, and that's why it's able to one-shot them. And the reason I'm saying this is because when we were doing random damage testing on mechs, when we were testing why the melee was stopping, we learned it usually just takes over a full magazine from the breaker shotgun to kill the mech. Now, I don't know the exact damage on this, but, but mechs die to one impact grenade, so they are definitely taking bonus damage from explosives. Now, I would hope that the devs, again, take a look at damage in general, because the same sort of thing is currently happening with heavy armor. You do take reduced damage if you're wearing uh, heavy armor while enemies are damaging you, but you take the same amount of crit damage even if you have heavy armor compared to light armor. And I would really like to see crit damage removed from our damage that we take, given that not only is it making heavy armor feel useless to use, but it's also making mechs feel very bad against robots because they have a lot of different enemies with splash damage. And this wouldn't really be a huge buff against the bugs, because I think it would really only affect the bile spitters, since the titan probably would one-shot you anyway with its acid breath, and that's the only other move I could think of with splash damage. Now the second reason the mech feels bad against robots is because currently there is a bug in the game where robots are able to shoot you through mountains sometimes. Now, it was hard to get a clip of this, but some of you may have experienced this. And this sort of got me thinking that it's very possible that robots are also able to see you and detect you through objects right now as well. And the thing with mechs is their threat radius is very high. Any enemy, including bugs, won't see you if you're standing next to the mech, for example, but once you get in the mech, you'll sometimes notice far away enemies suddenly detect you. So I believe what is possibly happening in on robot maps is when you hop in the mech, Currently, bots may be able to not only shoot through the mountains, but they may be able to detect you through mountains and objects as well. And all of a sudden, you have a way more than normal amount of bots coming at you, and it feels really bad to deal with. And I also believe that this is one of the reasons why the enemy AI has seemed way more aggressive in general this patch, even before mechs came out, because I believe this has been happening since the patch right before they did. Enemies can simply detect you through objects, that's what it seems like. 
Now, of course, this should hopefully be fixed as soon as possible, and when that happens, I'll make a specific video about mechs vs. robots. And just a quick tip when it comes to threat detection and getting enemies not to target your mechs, if you're not inside your mech, it seems like enemies will completely ignore it, but the second you get in, they start to target you like crazy. So I recommend not spawning your mech until that right moment. Use it for the objective, and then maybe use the second call-in for the extraction. And this is just a good overall tip for these mechs anyway, since you only get two call-ins and it does have a very long cooldown. And since mechs are pretty bad against robots, but if there are some of you out there who want to bring your mechs on robot missions anyway, I highly recommend always bringing the EMS mortar with you. This helps slow big groups of robots so that you can focus on different groups with your mech until you get to those ones that are slowed. Now, we did a bunch of robots on level 7 difficulty. We tested smoke, we tested airstrikes, we tested riding the mech with different support weapons to kind of cover some of those other groups. You know, the mech rider can help cover some of them. And I just happened to notice that when there was an EMS mortar out slowing a bunch of robots, that's when it felt like we had the most success and the most survival inside of the mech. And keep in mind, like I said, we were playing on level 7 difficulty because I didn't just want to test this stuff against Teledive because it wouldn't make much sense. And when it really comes down to it, mechs are not that good against robots, and Helldive robots are very aggressive. I feel like bringing a mech genuinely puts you at a disadvantage since it's taking up a stratagem slot which is a bit of a shame because mechs can two-shot hulks they can two-shot tanks and they can even kill dropships uh, i believe i killed a dropship in three shots when i was shooting the enemies from underneath the dropship before they landed and then i noticed the dropship died it would be very interesting to bring mechs against robots for some quick firepower because you still would be at a disadvantage compared to bugs given that robots can fight you at ranged i do feel like mechs still would be worse against robots even if the devs fixed a lot of these issues so i feel like it's not uncalled for to ask for some of these changes now let's get into some of the cool things we learned when testing mechs because i feel like we covered some of the negatives and some of the bugginess and some of the weird stuff i want to talk about some cool stuff. One really awesome thing is that mechs seem to either take no damage or at least very little damage from any sort of status effect. The gas strike doesn't seem to affect or kill mechs that fast, and the mech can also walk through fire damage lingering on the floor. If you're a mech user, you might just be able to use gas against the bugs, even if it is just more of a fun option, but the main great thing is getting on top of the mech as a second player riding around on top of your mech and shooting your flamethrower from the top of it. You will help the mech save ammo from the little swarms that run up to it, and on top of that, the mech driver won't have to worry about walking through the fire on the ground. One other quick little tidbit is mechs are not slowed from EMS strikes at all which is another reason the EMS mortar is a great combo with it. It's just completely unaffected. So once again, I always recommend bringing an EMS mortar if you decide to bring a mech with you on your missions. And then to finish off this video, let's go ahead and play the quick clip of the fact that mechs can swim even in deep water where you would normally drown. This is just a cool little tidbit I wanted to add. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this deep dive. Of course, I'll be doing more testing and probably make future videos if I learn anything new. And after they fix automatons, I will probably make a specific mech verse automatons video video because I planned on making this video a guide on how to use mechs most effectively but I did only ended up doing a little bit of that while finding out some mechanics behind the mechs instead and I also wanted to give a quick channel update for you guys at the end of this video I decided I'm going to keep on streaming here on YouTube I've been enjoying the discoverability on this platform and decided to stay here for at least the next couple of months I will say that Twitch is a big part of content creators like myself's income, so I have been responding to sponsor emails, and don't be surprised if you see an ad in some of my future uploads. Now, I'm also going to ask that if you enjoy my content, please consider spending $5 on a channel membership. This will unlock emotes in my live streams, and I also will be posting unlisted videos in my Discord to members before they are scheduled to go live. And this is one way I can slow down the daily uploads to focus on releasing more quality content while still going live almost daily. Now, if you're a longtime viewer and you don't want to spend the $5, don't feel bad, don't feel pressured. Once my next YouTube check comes in, actually, I will be gifting longtime viewers memberships that show up to the live streams. So look for that around the 21st of this month. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, just please drop a like on it and consider sharing it to friends. So I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.